so from the skills that you can come to me at 4 a.m. in the morning, um, there's a very loud crash that is really incorrect. He's been on TV television for two days. Me have filmed the scene at the time. This was just the most bloody moment, especially. I'm a bigger genius than most of you. How does it make you feel? Honestly, kind of hopeless. It's a bit like you're walking on eggshells in this washroom that looks like you've been in the only accessory facility. Leah, who doesn't want to show her face on camera, has a dad who is so ill he sleeps in a hospital bed in the front room and can't walk, so the downstairs bathroom is vital. Her room is the worst in the house with mould everywhere. It causes her a lot of distress. There's a lot of mornings where I feel really ill and unwell, and a lot of nights where I'm just kind of coughing and just feeling really, very sickly. Um, in the winter it's really hard because obviously with mould you have to often clean your windows, but it's cold. Birmingham City Council said it's sorry for the inconvenience and stress, and that a date to fix the bathroom ceiling has been arranged, with additional remedial works to be planned. It adds, our teams are exploring options for emergency accommodation, dependent on the timescales of the repairs. To 19-year-old Mia and her brothers, this is no way to live. Amy Cole, BBC Business Today, Birmingham. And for better sanitary bits, in men's toilets across Worcestershire. Incontinence is a common problem for men after prostate cancer treatment, but gents' toilets rarely have bins for useful and sore nappies. James Pearson reports. 64-year-old Ian Smith was diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer two years ago. What I heard is that the bones in his liver were deficient and the damage from the treatment had derailed them. That appears to show that they've been used to the loss of small Both of these are a real issue and you need to get rid of them, which is what boys need to be putting on paper is all about. Because blokes are what they are, they don't talk about it. So most venue owners don't know it's a problem because men don't talk about it. To try and make a difference, Ian's written to venues and businesses across Worcestershire, and some have been quick to make a change. Now Ian, come on in here. So it means, a, it means a real change in quality of life. One in three men over 65 will suffer from urinary incontinence, one in 20 from bowel. Ian's efforts are part of a wider Boys Need Bins campaign. Backed by charities like Prostate Cancer UK, it's calling for legislation to ensure sanitary bins are available in all male toilets. While the government says it's looking into it, it's yet to announce any change to work. For now, Ian's approach is paying off. More than a dozen organisations have already put in bins, helping men who live in the county. James Pearson, BBC Business Today, Worcester. Good evening to our community from the UK. And this is going out to the mainstream media. We need an investigation and we need this to be highlighted in mainstream media for the sake of humanity and for the sake of targeted individuals and their family members who are being targeted by criminal practicing rogue government and local council servants, NHS and medical and professionals and a community network that delves deep into evil sick, degrading crimes against individuals in the communities who have been put on a list. This list this list is illegal, criminal masterminded, master planned by the powers that be and everyone who's on this list is under 
OTT surveillance monitoring and human experimentation. And the human experimentation side of it all it says it's this degrading evil intent to cause neurological, psychological damage to, tar to target individuals and their family members' brains, sabotage their everyday life, and target them for the medical and healthcare industry. And everyone, everyone who's uh, participating, and they're all from all different walks of life, different ages, different colours, different creeds, different religions. These evil individuals will do anything for money. And what they're doing, they're, the, they're grotesque crimes against humanity. Going out intentionally to do harm, grievous body harm, on the individuals they've listed. And then the network has rogue and professional social workers, local hospital workers, and those who work in the mental health and handicap care home sectors. Between them all, it's a major conspiracy. And so the two clips on this video is part of the targeting program. They damage targets homes one way or another, shooting through with direct energy weapons, emitting radiation, water damage, and illegal break-ins, trespassing, walking burglaries, steal things, move things around to do psychological damage. Could poison, poison, poison people. And uh, it goes and it goes on and on. The longer you're on the list, the more evil and cunning and sly they get. And with the community and the workplace harassing, mobbing, stalking networks, they slander the individuals in the works area. Anytime the individuals go out, there's uh, the mobbing, the stalking, or community members who are cons conspiring together. And the slander they put out is just with intent to label the targets, the victims, and it's constant surveillance monitoring, stroke, clinical, close-up, non-consensual research studies. And under medical and healthcare abuse, some were put into non-consensual medical research, which this day and age, the technology they've got consists of body error networks, stroke, Medical body error networks, stroke, virus body error networks. While many also listed for brain experiments, which, did, which in today's times is remote neural monitoring, brain computer interfacing. Now, from my experiences, what's been happening to me and my family, I've had the water damage done up to four times, two in my old property, two in this property. And it's a rented accommodation from Housing Association. I've had walking burglaries, trespassing done, things going missing. And more evil, I've had the emitting radiation done on me in my old property. I don't know how long this has gone on for. Really, it's 20 years since May 2004. Emitting radiation consisting of dirty electric, how the property's wired up. X-raying with whatever equipment they've got, direct energy weapons, which consist of scalar beams, microwave beams, particle beams. And my local GP and the NHS hospital has diagnosed me with arthritis in my feet and they've damaged my left arm and elbow and they've diag just diagnosed me with uh, arthritis as well. Rheumatoid arthritis, and I've got evidence of direct energy weapons of emitting radiation via infrasound, ultrasound, EMF, and also detecting 
emitting radiation microphone, emitting radiation camera, spy books and studs. And I've got plenty of evidence to back it all up. And yet, when I go and report it, and I've been reporting for 20 odd years, it gets covered up by the local authorities and the rest of the UK investigating organisations. So, really, it's sending out a message to mainstream media, to the UK media, to the local newspapers, that this, this needs to be investigated, needs to be talked about, a topic needs to be done on it, a documentary needs to be done on it, to make people aware that uh, these crimes are happening worldwide daily, in huge numbers, hundreds of thousands daily, are being tortured. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, in shifts, because they've been listed for whatever reason by the local authorities and the, and the country's governments. And the evil that they use, from the sense of governments, government servants, linked to surveillance monitoring, private detectives agencies, to armed forces, dropouts, or mercenaries, to the local council workers, to the local hospital workers, to even community criminal minded ones, all participating in trying to destroy a person's life. Now, it says it's been exposed in America under the Havana syndrome, and the mainstream media is concentrating on the diplomats and government servants, to even CIA investigators being targeted by naval weapons. But they're not uh, highlighting and talking about the ordinary citizens in communities all over, all over the states in America. Well, other countries, but then China, it's been on the mainstream media. So all the other countries need to follow suit. We need to, we need to make people aware these crimes are a pandemic. There's loads of evil in our communities doing shifts on ordinary citizens who are not criminals, not participating in crime, and they're targeting not only me, my mother and my brother, who've been radiated, who've had nibble weapons aimed at them and being tortured by them. Okay, to a direct energy weapons, damaging their bodies, their eyes, their brains, and I want to major, major investigation by the Westminster Police Force, the Coventry Police, NHS England, and investigate health care conspirators, social workers that they're networking to. Yes, it's so obvious. I, I, I've experienced so much atrocity by the council authority that uh, I want them struck off and I want them imprisoned. The main perpetrators who were hiding in the offices of social services, hiding in the psychiatrist's office, hiding in healthcare offices, hiding in the NHS hospital, and hiding at home, or should me and my family getting tortured? And something needs to be done about it. So as the as target individual community member, I want the UK government to investigate these crimes and bring it to the mainstream media's attention. Now, since we demand change, and on the two videos, like I said, they're, they're traits of a targeting program. They sabotage people's homes in the first news clip, and in the second news clip, that's what they're doing. They're causing grievous body harm to individuals all over the world, and then they get diagnosed by their GPs, by their doctors, by the hospitals, as either having prostate cancer or some other form of cancer or disability linked to physical disabilities. Well, the other aspect of it all is they're trying to stitch and frame people up, TIs, into mental health due to the neural weapons, due to remote neural monitoring, brain interfacing, emitting radiation. Yes, they're going out intent. These teams, these teams and these gangs are going out with intent to endanger target individual lives and their families and going out to cause grievous body harm. And it needs to be brought to the world's attention, to the mainstream media's attention. So all I can all, all I can keep doing is trying to expose it all, 
talking to individuals not only in the UK and around the world who are going through similar abuse as me. And uh, we're all demanding change by our governments and to bring these perpetrators to justice. And those that are working in the government offices, in the local council offices, organisations, departments, in healthcare, in the NHS, in mental health and anti care homes. I've got, I've got a list of names who, who can spar in. And whenever the local police, the UK government investigators, worldwide investigators and NHS England investigators are ready, are ready to take me seriously, I've got a big list of names who are conspiring with a team who's surrounding me in shifts every day trying to cause me grievous body harm. So for the time being, TIs, stay safe. Try and protect yourselves and your family with shielding and carry on exposing. While the UK government, mainstream media and the local authority, this needs to be brought to all your organisations' attention, to the councillors, to the MPs, and to the mainstream media, so everyone can be vigilant and make sure they don't get abused and tortured and disabled by these evil rogue teams and gangs, that are not only doing it in the UK, all over Europe, all over the world, and we need to be locked up for it. Everyone take care. Good night from the UK.